Got another exam question on NMR for you to try. So we're up to number four now. So there's the question there. So if you want to have a go at that, pause the video and then play on when you're ready for the answers. Okay, so make a start then. You'll see I've jotted down a couple of things um, that I'll mention now. So chemical engineers investigated an unknown aromatic hydrocarbon. Hydrocarbon, carbon and hydrogen only. Aromatic contains at least one benzene ring. So we've got the mass spectrum and the carbon-13 NMR spectrum for the hydrocarbon. We've basically got to uh, work out which of the four possible isomers it is. And we've also got to rule out the other three. So we'll start with the mass spectrum. So the, the sort of key bit of information from the mass spectrum is this peak here furthest to the right. So the technical term for that is the molecular ion peak. I'll write all this up in a second. From the M over Z value, you can see that the M over Z is 106 for this. And that means it's MR is 106. And we're going to come back to this uh, once we've established the structure because we're going to identify one of the fragment peaks. So moving on to the carbon-13 NMR spectrum, you can see from the number of peaks, we've got five different carbon environments in this molecule. We can also say that one of the environments is a carbon-to-carbon -carbon environment. Four of the environments are aromatic carbons. Okay, so now we've done that, we're going to start bringing the numbers into play. So if we think about the fact that it's aromatic, it's got benzene in it, at least one benzene ring. Think about the MR as 106, so it can't have any more than one benzene ring in, otherwise that would take it way past 106. So we've got one benzene ring, which is six carbons, so there's an, a mass of 72 from those six carbons. If we take 72 from the 106, we get 34. So we can't have three more carbons because obviously that's 36. So there must be another two carbons. So there's a total of eight carbons in this hydrocarbon. So you can see I've written that up. So we've established there's eight carbons in the molecule. So they've got a mass of 96. The whole thing is 106. So we must have 10 hydrogens. Okay, so the four possible structures are these four here. So we've got ethyl benzene. And then we could say 1,2-dimethylbenzene, 1,3-dimethylbenzene, 1,4-dimethylbenzene. There's a little reminder of what we found out from the carbon-13 NMR. We've got five carbon environments, and one of them is a carbon-carbon environment. Four of them are aromatic carbons. So we'll just work through left to right and talk about each one and establish whether it could be that or not. So first one, we've got one, two carbon-carbon environments. So straight away, it's not that one, but we'll just keep going about total environments. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this has got six carbon environments. Let's put ENVs for short, if you don't mind. Six carbon environments. There's two carbon-to-carbon -carbon environments and one, two, three, four aromatic it's not that one so moving on to the next one we've got a line of symmetry running down here i'll just draw that in so they're equivalent to each other that's one carbon carbon environment they're equivalent to each other so that's a aromatic carbon environment they're equivalent to each other and they're equivalent to each other so this one has one, two, three, four carbon environments. One C to C, three aromatic. So it's not that one. Moving on to the next one, we've got a line of symmetry here. So they're equivalent to each other. Then that's unique. They're equivalent to each other. They're equivalent to each other. That's unique. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. 
times carbon, 1 times C to C, 1, 2, 3, 4. So this one's looking like it's the answer. And let's just rule out the last one. We've got to talk about all of them. So in this one, we've actually got two lines of symmetry. We've got one down there, one across there. So they're equivalent to each other. They're equivalent to each other. And all these are equivalent to each other. So we've got a total of one, two, three carbon environments. One, two aromatic environments. Now, I did say I'd go back to the mass spectrum and identify one of those fragment peaks. So the fragment peak I'm going to consider is this tall one here at M over Z 91. So if we think about the difference in mass between 106 and 91, it's 15. So something with a mass of 15 is broken off the original molecule. The obvious thing is a methyl group. So let's imagine that bond there is broken. The methyl groups come off. The remainder carries a positive charge. The mass spectrometer sees it. And obviously that's going to have a mass of 91. So if I just rub out this methyl group, put a square bracket around, because it's an ion, put a positive charge on. So that's what's caused that fragment peak at 91.